Hello everyone, it's Living Online here for Server Pro, and today I'll be showing you how to set up crossplay between Bedrock and Java using the Geyser plugin. Geyser is an advanced plugin that allows Bedrock players to join Java Edition servers. The plugin currently supports Bedrock Edition 1.18.0 to 1.18.30 and Java Edition 1.18.2. Geyser is still in development and not complete yet, so there may be bugs. However, all info is provided on the documentation page which we'll leave in the description. It's important to note that using the Geyser plugin makes your server less stable, meaning you may experience lag. But in this tutorial, we'll also be using the flood Gate plugin to help set up Geyser. This plugin isn't actually needed, but it makes things a lot easier. In a nutshell, Floodgate is a plugin that allows Minecraft Bedrock Edition accounts to join Minecraft Java Edition servers without needing a Java account. Firstly, to download Geyser and set it up on your server, you'll have to download the Geyser plugin itself. To do so, you'll have to head to this page, the link will be in the description. When you're there, you just have to click the download button at the top which will redirect you to this page. This page may look a little complicated, but don't worry, all you have to do is click on the geyser spigot.jar file at the top. That will immediately begin the file download. When it's done, that means you've successfully downloaded the Geyser plugin. However, you need another file to enable the Geyser plugin to work, so you should head back to Geyser's main page. At the top, next to the download button, you'll see another button saying Floodgate. Click that button to be redirected to another download page. When you reach that page, scroll down until you find some text saying download. Click on the text and you'll be redirected to one last page. There you'll see another set of files but you just need to press on the floodgate spigot.jar text for that file to download to. It's crucial you have both the geyser and the floodgate files downloaded to prevent any errors from occurring during the server setup. To make it easier to follow the next step though, we recommend dragging both of the files to your desktop. Now that we've downloaded Geyser and Floodgate, we can begin setting the Geyser plugin up on our server. To do that, you need to head to server.pro. There, you should make sure that you have a VPS server in order to follow the next few steps. If you don't have one, we've actually made a tutorial on how to purchase one, so you can find the link to that in the description. However, if you already have one, you can just access its control panel. Then, you want to click the Create Service tab on the left. When this screen pops up, you want to make sure the service is set to Minecraft Java Edition and the type is set to paper. Its crucial paper is selected here, otherwise you won't be able to follow the next few steps. When you've done that, you can select the version you want your server to be and then press install at the bottom of the page. The service will begin setting up and you'll know it's fully booted up when it stops flashing and turns green. Afterwards, you should head into the service and then its files tab. There you should see a plugins folder. If you don't see it, it may mean that the server hasn't finished booting up, so simply wait a couple seconds. If it's there though, head into it and this is where you're going to drag the geyser and floodgate files you downloaded earlier. When they're finished uploading, quickly restart the service to ensure the changes take effect. Over on the Shell tab, you'll be able to see that the plugins have been installed properly if it says Loaded Floodgate Key and Started Geyser. Now that we know the plugins have been installed correctly, you have the option of configuring them. You can do that by heading to the Files tab, into Plugins, and then if you open the Geyser Spigot folder, you'll see there's a config text file. If you double click it, you'll be able to check out its contents. Firstly, you have Bedrock settings at the top. If you'd like to set an MOTD, you can by simply replacing the Geyser and another Geyser server text. You can also name your server whatever you want where it says Geyser, but these features are just optional. Above that, you'll see a line saying port and a set of numbers. If you're not using the default port, you should change those numbers to the port number you're using. If you scroll down to remote, there's also a port line there where you'll want to change the port if you're not using the default one. Unless you have changed the default ports, you should leave these as they are. When you're done though, don't forget to save file to confirm the changes. Since we know the plugins have been correctly installed and configured, the only thing left to do is make sure they're actually working. To do so, we're going to be joining with Java and Bedrock clients at the same time to show that everything is running smoothly. Firstly, I'll be getting the IP by heading to the server's main dashboard and copying the host name. Then, I'll be opening my Minecraft Java application and when it's launched, I'll go to the multiplayer section. There, I'm pressing on add server and under the server address section, I'll be pasting the host name. 
Once that's done, I'll be joining the server, and when the world has loaded up, you can see that the server is working for Java players. Now we're going to have to make sure it's also working for Bedrock players, so I'll be opening my Minecraft Bedrock application. When the game is opened, I'll head to Play, into the Service tab, and then scroll down to the bottom of the page. There I can see an Add Server button, so I'll be pressing it. All I have to do when the server menu pops up is paste the host name in the server address section and name the server. You can name the server whatever you want, but when you're ready, click play. If you load into the world with no errors, then the plugin has worked successfully. However, if it comes up with the notice saying you need a Java account to play on the server, that's because you haven't downloaded and installed the Floodgate plugin, so make sure to go back and do that. As you can see though, if I walk around, I can see my Java character, meaning the server is fully crossplay compatible. If this is the case for you too, that means you have followed this tutorial successfully. If you continue to have issues, you can always visit this page. We'll leave a link in the description. There you'll be able to find solutions to all kinds of error messages you may get. Well, that's it for this video. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them down below. And if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to see more from our channel. Thank you for watching.